kind of challenges that developing countries face in generating revenue or collecting revenue from multinationals operating in their countries. I want to have a quick look at the BEPS process to see whether or not that process is, is positioned to address some of those concerns. And finally, I want to place it in an Irish context and see what, if any, role Ireland can play in ensuring that some of these things that would make a difference to, benefit, to developing countries can, be, uh, can Ireland play a role in that. So, um, in 2011, a leaked audit report from the auditors, Grant Thornton, highlighted that the Mopani mine, which is a subsidiary of the uh, commodities giant Glencore, was undervaluing their sale of copper out of Zambia to sister companies in Switzerland and uh, exaggerating the costs of their, uh, of their labor costs in Zambia in an effort to minimize their tax bill in Zambia. Um, to quote from the, from the uh, leaked audit report, it said, we believe that the Mopani cost structure cannot be trusted to represent the true natures of the costs of the Mopani mining operation, and it requires um, more follow-up. Based on the two years for which the company was audited, the Center for Trade and Policy and Development in Zambia estimate that Zambia lost out on 88 million euro in taxable revenue. The Zambian government themselves estimate that they lose on an annual basis $2 billion every year to transfer pricing abuse in the main from the mining sector. This in a country where life expectancy is 47 years. In 2013, the uh, NGO ActionAid published a report entitled Sweet Nothings, in which they detailed the elaborate tax avoidance scheme of um, ABF Sugar, a UK uh, con food conglomerate, um, which resulted in 17.7 million since 2007 to 2013 being lost to the Zambian Exchequer. What's interesting from an Irish perspective is that part of that scheme involved the use of subsidiary company based in the IFSC, which was, uh, to which they were, uh, which was charging for management and purchasing costs from their subsidiary company in Zambia on an average of 2.6 million a year since 2007. Um, that, that it was taking advantage of the Zambia-Ireland tax agreement, which doesn't require withholding tax on purchasing and management fees coming out of Zambia. I should say that there, uh, the subsidiary in the IFSC has zero employees. In 2014, Christian Aid and its partners in Sierra Leone uh, produced a report entitled Losing Out. Um, in it, it highlights that <clears throat> the cost of tax expenditures, incentives, and exemptions granted to the multinationals operating in Sierra Leone costs more than eight times the health budget and seven times the education budget. This is in a country where 50% of the population live below the poverty line. I give these examples by way of providing three distinct and different examples of the challenges that developing countries are facing. First is illegal, it's an abuse of the arm's length principle, and nobody should have any truck with that. The second is legal, but it's an example how the system in its current format is being abused and milked by legal tax avoidance schemes. The third is an example of the pressure that resource-rich, capital-poor developing countries are placed under to attract foreign direct investment into their countries while avoiding, while trying to avoid a dangerous and damaging race to the bottom with their neighbors. There's lots of numbers bandied around, around the extent and the volume of uh, revenue lost to developing countries. They're all contested. It's like trying to put a number on the drugs trade. What we do know, though, is, and what the OECD agree with, is that they are losing more money than they're receiving in aid on an annual basis. The question is, can the OECD BEPS process address these issues? And will it make it more easy or easier for, the, for developing countries to generate and collect revenue? The answer is probably not. There are real questions about the ability of the OECD to deliver reform equally for all countries. Fundamentally, the OECD BEPS process is not set up to represent all countries equally. The OECD is, uh, as a membership of 34 of the wealthiest countries in the world, 
And the BEPS process was designed for and by these 34 member countries plus the non-OECD G20 countries and not, with, and, not rep, and not with developing countries in mind. This, these sentiments are captured by um, Fr uh, Francophone finance ministers in a statement in Washington last year where essentially they say that the low-income countries need an equal um, place at the decision-making table. There have been plans for greater consultation um, from the OECD announced last month, which are very welcome. But fundamentally, it's as much an acknowledgement that the process up until now has been fundamentally flawed, at least from the perspective of developing countries. Inviting some developing countries into a process that is progressing, I think it's agreed, at a remarkable pace, and to expect them to work to an action plan that has already been agreed will not get to the core of the problem of a lack of representativity, inclusivity, and participation. Christian Aid published a report recently highlighting these and other concerns. And just to take two points from the action plan to highlight the fact that most of the issues that are of relevance or of interest or value to developing countries have been deprioritized, and those that are of most interest and value to OECD countries are the ones that are getting most attention. Action point five, to give an example, commits the OECD to tackle harmful tax practices. This, as illustrated by the Sierra Leone case, has the potential, has huge potential for developing countries if real action was taken on it. Was taken on it. However, progress on this, including, uh, progress on this has been blocked or has been very slow including um, blocked by some OECD members, um, ensuring that little or no progress has been made on it. Action point 13 will require, as we heard Pascal say this morning, uh, companies to report on a country by country basis. This would provide the kind of information that people will need to be able to identify whether or not the economic presence of a company corresponds to the tax that they're paying. Again, this would have been very useful in the Mopani mine case. It would have held up a red flag very quickly that there's something irregular was going on. However, the OECD doesn't propose that this would be placed in the public domain. In fact, it looks increasingly likely that it will not be made available to developing, uh, developing country revenue authorities. We heard Pascal this morning say that these would be exchanged on a, bi on a tax treaty basis. Well, that's very unfortunate for developing countries who don't have tax treaties in the main with Switzerland or with Luxembourg or these countries where there is much less access to the information that they would require. Finally, it's, it's essentially a question of democracy. It has been said by, by many, including Pascal, that the legitimacy of the OECD BEPS process lies in the fact that it represents 90% of the world economy. This may indeed provide it with an economic mandate, but with over 100 countries not involved in the process, it does not provide it with a democratic mandate. But I don't want to be too um, unconstructive in my comments, and I do have four quick things that I'd like to propose that could improve the situation of the BEPS process going forward. One more effective and real engagement with developing country governments and civil society. A focus, too, a focus on priority sectors for developing countries, the extractive sector, agriculture, and a stronger focus on the specific needs and approaches that would help developing countries tackle transfer pricing abuse. The third, G20 countries could provide a statement committing them to ending the beggar thy neighbor policies of tax practices which only result in a dangerous race to the bottom, a race to the bottom that Christine Lagarde has said just leaves everybody sitting on the bottom. And finally, the process should take place within an intergovernmental body which is fully representative and fully inclusive. To conclude with, to place this in an Irish context, the Irish government is very much involved, as one might expect, in the BEPS process. And there are two documents that should, in part, be guiding their engagement with the BEPS process. The first 
is the Ireland's international tax strategy from the Department of Finance of 2014, in which it makes a commitment to ensure that developing countries are able to raise their own revenue. The second document is that from One World, One Future, which is a government document which lays out Ireland's international development strategy. In that, there is a commitment to ensuring greater coherence across policy, across government policy, including in the area of tax and development. But it is precisely in the area of tax and development that some will see a contradiction between, on the one hand, a commitment to ensuring that the reforms within the international taxation system has been led by the OECD BEPS process, ensuring that that benefits de developing countries, and on the other, a commitment to what some will see as the harmful tax practices that form an essential and central part of Irish foreign direct investment policy. That Ireland has launched a spillover analysis of its tax work, of its tax policy, to see whether or not there is any negative impact on developing countries is extremely welcome. And whatever the findings are when they emerge at, by the end of this year, it would seem clear that there will remain a tension between ensuring Ireland is able to thrive under whichever new international tax regime emerges and providing the same opportunities for others to develop and not condemning those countries to a continued reliance on aid. I'd like to conclude by thanking the Institute for <coughs> inviting me to speak today and for giving civil society an opportunity to be present at this important event. Thank you.